Hey, how's it going? So join me for 24 hours in Turnip Hill. If you can get one up on Burger King or McDonald's, you're doing well, I think. Poor guy. I mean, this guy is he's, he's in his 60s at least. He's classed as a far-right nationalist. Many people are some of the warmest people you'll ever meet. You've just joined me at Lviv Station. I'm going to take the train. A very slow train, I think. Uh, two hours uh, east to Turnip Hill. Never been there before, so join me while I experience Turnip Hill. your carriage, this is a very long train, and carriage five, so all the way back here I think, seven. What's interesting, every carriage on these types of old trains is run by a different company, so some carriages you'll get very glitzy, you get another carriage and it will be, <laughs> it'll be really run down. I get the impression I didn't pay much for my ticket, so carriage will be adequate, let's just say adequate. So basically these work as a um, bed for a, perfect for a long, long train journey. So for example, if you're going 12 hours, however, two and a bit hours, not so perfect because when someone wants to lie down you have to lie down or perch on someone else's seat and they don't always appreciate that. Not so social today. It looks like, um, you know, one of the stages when you're about to embark a Call of Duty or something. World War II, these old trains here. But nope, we're in a modern city. Well, that's the hope anyway. We're going to be checking out Turnip Hill. Turnip Hill? Maybe that's not how you say it. But by the end of this video, I will know how to say Turnip Hill. I'll be honest, the train was a good 45 degrees Celsius on the inside. It wasn't pleasant. I had a headache the entire journey. Now sometimes those journeys are quite fun. Sometimes you've got people drinking, sometimes you've got people chatting away, but when it's 45 degrees and it's crowded and no one's really saying things, it wasn't too fun. Well, here we go. 24 hours in Turnipool. Just after 6, 8.16, 8.16, 8.16, 6.16, uh, 6.16 p.m. We're going to go ahead this way. I noticed on the map that most things in the CBD are pretty much aligned. I think my hotel is that way. I'm staying in, of course, the Hotel Turnip Hill. I've got to walk through the centre of the town and it's right on a lake or something. I could be wrong, but... Let's see what this place is like. I think the more important thing is, let's see if we can meet some people. Let's see if we can experience what tur the Turnipils experience every day. Headache's starting to disappear now. The train journey at 45 degrees when there's no windows isn't too fun. The price you pay for videos like this. Look at that beautiful dog. I'm a big fan of dogs. Especially, especially the bigger dogs. I'm not a fan of big dogs, but I got a soft spot for all dogs. I'm liking this main central street. I don't know if it is the main central street. And the way I generally navigate when I arrive in a city, I look at Google Maps. Yep, I'm going the right way. So I'm 13 minutes from my destination. How about this? I will turn it on and off when we see things that are interesting. But to be honest, this central street has a lot going for it. I've got these amazingly beautiful balconies. It's the details, probably these buildings were built back in the Tsar days, certainly not communist. Communists weren't into the details that the Tsar architects were into. 
This building is probably more communist. Some of the balconies are starting to show their age, just like communism eventually shows its age over time. Very typical in pretty much any city, town, village in Ukraine. Dancing fountains. Remember that place we went to one of my adventures where the main attraction was the dancing fountain. Right next to Cool Baby, Cool Baba, Bistro, and Mo Burger. Hopefully some Ukrainian cuisine tonight. I made the error last night of not going to my favorite rib restaurants in Lviv and, and instead opting for a very below par meal. The restaurant shall not be named, it should probably not be shamed, but maybe, maybe follow me on uh, Google Maps, you might see that review sometime. I'm liking this center. Beautiful buildings, it's obviously a government town hall maybe, possibly the town hall. More modern types of buildings. Love the colors of the trees, balconies up here, we've got really nice detail. And then, let's have a look at who this fine chap is. Now I find a lot of places you go to, there's always a statue of Taras Shevchenko. Put your fingers on the buzzers, who's this going to be? It's not Taras Shevchenko. If you can't read the Cyrillic alphabet, then stay tuned. I will reveal who that is later on in this video. And once again, thank you for joining me. Smash that like button if you haven't already done so. It will help this video be seen by more people. So honestly, I really will appreciate that effort. Thank you sincerely. So just bear in mind, this is the first time I'm seeing this square in my life. And this is possibly the first time some of you are seeing this square. And look at this. I love this sort of Greek architecture that we have in a lot of cities in Ukraine. This city being no exception. Looks like this is the theatre. Well, you will remember my, many of the places I visited had places just like this. It's almost like how to build a Ukrainian city. And they all get sort of the similar sort of blueprints and the similar architects come in. And obviously what we see from every single Ukrainian video. The man with his cars is here. Classic every video we do. Rents out his little cars, some electric, some are just ones you push. The kids love it. The kids are out, family friendly. Kebab places. Always best to avoid those, I think, especially in the Ukraine. They're not the kebab places aren't that great. I don't know why. I'm just not. I'm just not a fan. The random stray dog. You know it's a stray because it's got the yellow tag in its ear. They seem to tag the strays. Hello, dog. How are you? Ah, my first resident from Ternopol. How are you? Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Oh, he's going to try and hunt me now. <laughs> he's trying. Probably uh, don't always befriend the strays because they, you might try and hump you. They try. <laughs> See, jumping up on that man as well. <laughs> I think if, if I see him later, I'll have some food for him. I think that's probably a good plan and then I won't be able to get rid of him. And then I found a friend for life. this chap over here. Do you think this is old Taras? This could be Taras. Should we have a look? <laughs> Lo and behold, I just looked at Google Maps. This is Taras Shevchenko. I should have recognized it from the big mustache. This is a proud statue of Taras Shevchenko. Uh, you will remember him from pretty much every single one of my videos, except this time this is Taras Vchenko in uh, Ternopil. This is a fine statue of Taras, the writer, the poet, the nationalist. He means a lot to those in Western Ukraine. As well. So in a way, it's not really any surprise that we see Taras there looking straight towards us, focused. It's a beautiful statue. I mean, what a wonderful time to enter the city. The sun is going down. Lucky for me, I've got all of tomorrow to explore this place. Hopefully I can store my bag in the hotel. I've been literally staying one night. I think I'm gonna be getting on the same train that I got here. So 
fingers crossed the carriage has air conditioning or has a window that can open. And then the next place I will go will be a little bit further along the train line. And then that's of course something keeps me here, who knows? I don't know if we can see through there, just with the sunset. Obviously some sort of amazing church. We're going to have a look at that later, probably tomorrow. I'll make a point to go and look at that church tomorrow morning. I think I'm down here. First impressions, once again, a Ukrainian city is ticking all the boxes. It's ticking the boxes when it comes to the randomness of, you know, czar architecture, communist architecture. It's ticking boxes when it comes to beautiful squares. Uh, it's ticking boxes when it comes to the trees lining the roads. Despite a man holding a camera and w clearly walking around, not speaking the language, feeling no threat whatsoever. And so once again, it feels so far very safe. I had to look at the Google Maps just to check to see where I was going. I was going slightly in the wrong direction, but now back in course, we're actually going to be walking past this, it turns out to be a cathedral that we noticed in the distance. And I think it'd be wise obviously to go there later, but this is the Cathedral of the Immaculate. And for my quick clicks on Google Maps, just to try and find my way, it is an impressive sight in the inside, not just the outside. Hopefully we'll be able to get in there tomorrow. But here's the thing, I mean... You say what you like, you know, about the sort of randomness of, you know, sometimes a balcony goes up because the owner will decide to put one. But sometimes they do it quite well. And then sometimes not so well. But I kind of like that, I like the kind of chaos. Possibly someone's getting uh, celebrating, birthday, stag do, wedding. Not for me. And then here we are on the square that we were on earlier, but linking back to it now. I think I'm down this way. I'm heading towards the sun. Will I get to my destination before sunset? The Hotel Tonopil, the Hotel Tonopil. That's what you say in uh, Ukrainian. This beautiful Soviet hotel. Mr. Bald, you'd be happy about this. This is where I will be staying. So check this out. Let's go and hopefully they have my reservation. Hotel Tenopil. Ah, look at this. Well, <laughs> this isn't the, um, the the kitchen forces lift. This is the uh, the main lift for the guests. And there's only one lift in this hotel. I'd love to know when this was built, but I love the buttons, a mishmash of random buttons. Fifth floor, 502. Oh, looks like this wing is out of order, so we've tried this way. Let's check out the room. And this room is... There we go, let's put the uh, lights on. Pretty basic room, but look at it. I've got a view. This for 900 Grivna. 900 Grivna. Not too bad, eh? Not too shabby. Well, let's see what I get. Oh, I got zebras. I have zebras. I have what appears to be a clean bed. I, I 
I've had a few unclean beds before in the past, not in hotels, but Airbnbs. And I've got this magnificent view. Obviously, they get mosquitoes here, so they've got the mosquitoes, got flies up. What a view. To be honest, normally I'm quite sarcastic about the views, but here, that's not too bad, actually. It's not bad. It's a small room. It's got the classic sort of the big television in the corner. Let's check out, check out the bathroom, shall we? Turn the lights on. See, you know, get to see if there's any dodgy stains in corners. No, it all looks legit. And there's air conditioning. Should I need it? Let's have a look at this bathroom. Oh, everything's in the right place. Everything as you'd expect. Clean, clean, clean shower which I think I'm going to use now because I think I'm a bit stinky after that train journey. Well, that is a, what you get in Turnipil for 900 Grivners on a Saturday. Not bad, eh? Not bad. So it's probably cheaper during the week. So come here on a Saturday, 900 Grivners. coming to the what seems to be the busiest place in town. I couldn't even get a table, so I got myself the local craft beer from the place called Le Rock. Rock. Uh, it seems to have a sort of rock theme to it. This is the American AP IPA, and you know what? The pint is 43 Grivners. Amazing value. Uh, you can get the light beer, which is generally like a lager, for 35 Grivners. That's one pound. It's a really good beer. That's a really good beer. Anyway, I'm gonna enjoy myself, eat something. Um, if there's any interactions, I'll put it on camera. I'm clearly on my own, so the barman's taking pity on me, and he's giving me a selection of all the the nice, well, the beers which are downstairs in the brewery. And this is the brewery downstairs. I'm not sure if you can see this. I got this, I got this brewery beneath my feet. I'm a, I'm a sucker for good beer. So obviously the American Pale Ale, amazing. Probably going to get copyright claim here. Vice beer, lager, Irish red, milk stout. I'm going to try them all. In order of ranking and preference, I'm glad I chose this one. This is the best. Milk Stout second, the Irish Red third, the Vice fourth, Hell's, yeah, it's all right, but it's a little bit weak. I like the flavor of this one, really good flavor. Thank God for good Ukrainian company. I've uh, found some tonight from this gentleman here. My name is Eugene, I'm a uh, bartender in Leroy. So I greet all of you foreigners to come into to the Chernobyl, to the restaurant Leroy, to try some very tasteful and uh, nice craft beer. You're welcome, guys. We're waiting for you. Are they welcome then? Yes, no, it's a compliment. It's a compliment. All right, to, uh, to Ukraine, guys. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Very tasty. Yeah. I, I forgot just. On, on top, you understand? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Okay. I'll just mix. I thought I was. I thought I was leaving after this. No, I'm, I'm, this is the Walking Dead, apparently. I apologize. How much touring I'm going to do tomorrow? Okay, the Walking Dead. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. That's Robia. All good. Well, it's very drinkable. Have, I was going to the craft beer place. I don't know if I will now. I'm ready tomorrow. <laughs> this was <laughs> this video was supposed to be 24 hours in in in, in Turner. Right. Turner Pill. That was it. 24 hours in Turner Pill. Now we're like. <laughs> Thank you.
you very much. Wonderful Ukrainian company, wonderful bar, highly recommend it. Ukrainian people are, I, and I tell this to every single person I know in London, or my family, my friends, I tell them, I say, Ukrainian people are some of the warmest people you'll ever meet. I, I, and they don't believe me because they see these movies. You know, like you, you tell oh, me. Like glass and walls, so like, okay, so your your perception of England is these pubs that you can't go into, otherwise you can get beat up. Hey, the feisty goat. <laughs> <laughs>top room where I spent the last few hours trying to recover from the most uh, god-awful hangover. Word of advice when you're in Tinopol, don't get carried away like I did. First few drinks, very calm, collected, enjoyed the company of various Ukrainian people. Thank you for entertaining me last night, it was incredibly enjoyable. I ended up in some random club, probably could have done with the last couple of drinks. My advice is, as tasty as the Walking Dead drink may be, the Walking Dead drink will leave you feeling like the Walking Dead the next day. Ah, now, this is actually, it's called a pond, but it, to me it looks like a lake. And it was produced by man because this area used to be very swampy back in the day. So to sort of get rid of the swamps, they produced this lake. And over here, Something very common in Ukraine. People declaring their love for one another. Like I say before, the uh, lot makers, this must be where they do a lot of their business these days. Every European city, cities all over the world in fact, South America, North America, Asia, anywhere there's a, a bit of a fence or a, some sort of, I don't know, this is modern art, you'll see people declaring their love. Three and R. Well, I'm glad oh, I finally fell in love with num number three. Hopefully it's not three people. Uh, but let's walk around this lake. I think if you were here for a long period of time and not just 24 hours and you weren't wasting that in the, um, well not wasting it, in taking in the bars around Tenopol, you probably could walk around what they call the pond. Now I think maybe they call it the pond because, oh here's a, there's a bit of a club here by the way. Maxim Club. No relation to Maxim the magazine. But it is all rather beautiful, isn't it? We're going to go check out a statue I was recommended to see last night by one of my fellow Ukrainians who I got to hang out with. This is his favourite statue. I think a good 300 metres this way. So what we're going to do, take in the view 
and try and blitz as much of this city within the next few hours because I need to jump on a train. I wish I wasn't leaving actually because I think this city deserves much more attention and my sincere apologies to you guys because clearly I have failed in my taking in as much of the city as possible. A wise man would have been up at the crack of dawn and instead I was nursing a very sore head and now repeating myself. Let's take this in. Look at this. I love the fact that there's always amazing playgrounds for kids. I, I get there's playgrounds all over the world, but you see playgrounds all over the Ukraine. Always a bit of imagination going on with them. This is rather, rather beautiful. Big Ukrainian flag over there. I hadn't noticed that until just now. A really, really nice, beautiful Ukrainian flag. I imagine this is probably a focal point for people when they want to take wedding photos. And why not? Man fishing, so there's actual fish in this pond. Another artificial pond, or maybe the, a river actually does flow through this area, so it is free flowing water coming, coming down from the hills and the, the hills in the surrounding area, and then eventually it will flow. I think it probably connects eventually to the Red, the Red Sea. To the Black Sea, to the Black Sea. That's how hungover I am. To the Black Sea, it will eventually connect. Quite a few fishermen, in fact. Well, this certainly seems to be the point to come for the fish. This is a Sunday, by the way. It's the reason it feels a little bit sleepy. It's bright September sunshine, clear blue skies. You could almost think you were by a lake in Switzerland in a way, if it wasn't for the lack of high mountains. It is rather pretty. I think we might be getting closer to the statue. Um, I hope. I hope the statue will go in the right direction. Bit of a pleasure cruise going on here. I presume it's probably pretty common actually, but what surprises me is the lack of boats on the water. It's one of the few, well, the only one I've seen so far. We find ourselves on this little island connected by this bridge. This island's called Lover's Island. And just to give you some perspective on how big or small this pond is, I think in the normal world we would call this a lake and I think if this was in Scotland we'd call it a lock but this is Ukraine so they call it a pond. Ukraine is the biggest country in Europe so why not? They can call their their large ponds ponds if they want to I say. Well it's a different Mo Burger from the one I saw but I'm getting to try the coffee. 16 grivna for the coffee and panini for 32.99 so 33 grivna so it's just under one pound as we see the wind blowing the flags a little bit i hope this doesn't disrupt the audio this is stepan bandera stepan bandera he uh was born i believe in 1902 in what was poland in poland effectively however there was the Ukrainian-Polish war, which happened after the First World War, 1918 to 1919, which caused the, the occupation of the territory of what is now Lviv, and also, I think, think possibly this area. And what this meant was the young Stefan Bandera was living in what was considered East Poland then, what is now west of where we are now. And he was just a young student, and he wanted to go to a university in the Czech Republic. Czechoslovakia back then but the Polish authorities banned all travel and he wasn't allowed to go effectively similar to what we have today with current lockdowns restricted movements and because of this he was forced to go to his 
a local university in what was effectively Poland at the time, Lviv. So he went to Lviv Polytechnic, and it was there that historians will tell you this man was radicalized. He effectively, from there, led the Ukrainian national movement. He's classed as a far-right nationalist. And this is the flag associated with his party, the black on the lower part and red on the top. Slightly different to what the Ukrainian flag is, which is yellow, blue. Now we all know what the uh, Ukrainian flag symbolizes. The yellow symbolizes the, the fields, the cornfields, and the blue is the blue sky. But in, apparently, and this, this is coming from some Ukrainians last night, they inform me, because I quizzed them about having seen this in, in another city and it playing a big part in the Madden revolutions. The black symbolizes the charred ground and the red symbolizes the red sky because it affects a war status. So when the country is at war, the black charred ground and the red sky, because being lit up with all the bombardment of the bombs and the firing, and you get the picture. He is a controversial figure, as you can imagine, because he's obviously labeled as a nationalist and far right. He is very much disliked by those on the left and he's very much disliked by Israelis and Orthodox Jews. You can kind of see their point. Once the Second World War started in 1941, he pledged his allegiance to Adolf Hitler. Him and his party pledged their allegiance to Adolf Hitler. What was strange though, there was friction and he was effectively sent to a concentration camp, I think in 1942, somewhere near Krakow. When the war started in 1941, he went to Krakow, effectively where those aligned with Adolf Hitler's Nazis based themselves in terms of setting up for Eastern Europe. However, frictions happened while he was there and then he was captured by the SS and then he was sent to a high-ranking concentration camp where there's lots of high-ranking officials who they weren't sure what to do with. I think sometime in 1944, he was released, some say by the Nazis, some say by Polish guards. It's a little bit unclear on who actually released him, but apparently it was as the war was coming to an end. War wasn't looking too good for the Germans at that stage. He was released in the hope that he might sort of rally his supporters, and in rallying his supporters, he would fend off the Bolsheviks, the communists that were effectively coming through what is present-day Ukraine. He was considered an anti-Bolshevik, anti-communist back in the day. The attempt was he would rally his supporters to sort of fend off the communists that were making a move on what is now current-day Ukraine and Poland. He, like most far-right nationalists post the Second World War, met a grisly end in the end. I think sometime in 1961 or 1962. It's a shame he doesn't have a birthday on the statue, which is kind of strange. But I think it was 61. The KGB assassinated him in Munich. And there's an interesting film that was made about that assassination. I think it came out around about the year 2000. Worth watching. A night in Munich and an assassination in Munich or something. But it was one of the last assassinations carried out by the KGB involving cyanide back in the day. They used other things after that. The cyanide assassination brought him to an end. 2009-2010, he was nominated as the hero of Ukraine. However, obviously this caused huge controversies, so it was taken away from him, taken away from him, he was dead. The title was taken away from Stefan Bandera because he wasn't considered a Ukrainian citizen because at the time he was born in Poland. Really interesting character. And what is really more interesting is the fact that this statue is presented in the way it is. It's obviously a new statue built in the last sort of 10 years, I believe. And there's a similar statue. There's a statue of him in Lviv, which is normally under guard because despite the support that he receives in Lviv, they did a poll on Stefan Bandera and the support that he gets in Western Ukraine is in the high 70% plus and very positive. Whereas if you go to Eastern Ukraine, where there's a large Russian contingent, he's not loved at all. Let's try and wait for the wind to die down. Either way, he's much loved in Western Ukraine, very much disliked in other parts of uh, Ukraine, in Eastern Ukraine. Uh, this statue is a proud, proud looking statue and make of him what you like. He clearly stood up for his nation in positive ways and in negative ways, but here he is celebrated in the city of Tinopol. Anyway, let's continue. Hope you don't mind my long spiel there and hopefully there weren't too many errors. Honestly, 
fascinating character opposite this government building here. And it's the thing, Sunday. The cathedral is so popular on Sunday, there's people outside, it's so busy. There's a queue of people to get in. I guess I'll be respectfully going inside after the service is over because I think right now it would be inappropriate to go in there and do a bit of filming. But it just shows the importance that the Orthodox religion has with the Ukrainian people, certainly in Tinopol. But, but let's go and have a look at something else. We're back at the Daniel of Galatia monument. I'm really impressed by this monument simply because of just how powerful the horse looks and how powerful Daniel looks. Now he's an interesting king. He ruled in the 13th century. He was kind of there when the Mongols sacked Kiev and the Mongols sort of ran amok through most of Eastern Europe in the early 13th century. To the extent that when they came through and met with Daniel, or met, he had to sort of bow down to them and he had to drink, I think he drank some yak's milk or whatever the Mongols drank back then. And basically, in him drinking that liquid that they gave him, basically said, well, you better get used to it. We own you now. But despite the fact that this part of the world was defeated by the Mongols, he brought rule to the area that is effectively Poland, Hungary and Ukraine today. He brought stability and prosperity. And over the course of his rule, and I think by the time he died in sometime the middle of the 13th century, the Mongol grip on that part of the world had been lessened thanks to him. So despite the fact that he bowed down to them, he, in the background, went out of his way to try and rid the land of the Mongols and rid the land of the Mongol influence. Eventually, it was obviously rid of that influence because of powerful individuals like him, and which effectively shaped the Europe that we know today. Without this man, Hungary, Poland, Ukraine might not be what they are today. So he was an influential character, and I think that's why he has such a strong monument here opposite the Tenopol Hotel. Anyway, let's continue onwards. Now this fine man, he looks a little bit like Stalin, but let's not insult him because this is Ivan Franco. And Ivan Franco was literally a bit of everything. He was born locally, what is Galassia, close to Lviv. And he was a writer, he was a poet, uh, he was a translator, he was a journalist. Translated some of the great works by William Shakespeare, Lord Byron. And he brought these amazing works to Ukraine, but he also pretty much did the same. Look him up, wonderful, wonderful, individual, wonderful writer, and interesting, his parents thought he could dodge death by not calling him Ivan. They called him something else when he was a child, in the belief that, the superstitious belief that the character, the deaf character, wouldn't find him if he didn't have the right name. A remarkable belief, but at the same time a remarkable man. <laughs> A little bit of a shame that the uh, fountains aren't working. Maybe only drained for a couple of days. Maybe they've been like this for a long time, I'm not sure. Almost looks like Margaret Thatcher, but it's not. I 
say I really like some of the benches around here. You see the, the art in the benches. Some benches are more traditional. There's always something going on. There's always something to look at. But then the, you can say the same about most places. But what you do notice, and I find this very obvious, walking around, speaking a, obviously a foreign language, that I feel no threat here. It's incredibly safe. And it was the same last night. Uh, I was out very late, uh, well after midnight, I think in the early hours, and it's, it still felt very safe. I was warned by a couple of locals that sometimes there would be issues, but there's issues like that in the smallest provincial towns in all over the world. I believe this is Solomenia. Maybe that's who was sitting on the bench over there. This is another statue of her. She was a renowned opera singer, I believe. Maybe, maybe my viewers would be able to tell us a little bit more about her. From what I understand, she was born in this region and she, and she died in Lviv because I saw this woman in Lviv, hence the, hence the recognizable characteristics. And probably, I'm not sure if she's not facing a music hall, but maybe this used to be a music hall. But it's certainly, um, it's quite a proud looking statue. I like it. So it turns out this was the department store and on this site where the department store now rests, used to be this magnificent church and this is the parish church of our lady of perpetual help basically says it was badly damaged in the first world war and also the second world war and i imagine probably during the polish ukrainian war is after the first world war eventually it was destroyed in 1955 and it's a shame it's a shame because this monstrosity was built on top of it the foundations once were there what can you do what can you do I believe this is the monument to remember those that were deported, well, I think, during the Soviet times. People were deported to the gulags. Deportations have happened all over this land over, over the years, but I think reference to the gulags, but it could also be significant to those that were deported and executed during Nazi occupation. And it could also be relevant during the Polish occupation of this area. People were deported who weren't Poles. And there's been deportations going back centuries, but I think this is in reference to the Soviet deportations. An old, very Soviet stadium. The floodlights on either corner. But the reason I came up here and I walked up Stepan, Stepanana, Bandara Street or Boulevard, very busy road. Notice all the traffic back there. Ternopil doesn't actually have a large amount of busy streets. The reason I headed up this road and on the other side of the railway tracks is to get to this park. There was any bit of green I noticed on the other side of the railway tracks. I thought it was worth checking out because I believe this is where we will see the monument, the eternal flame. Something you would have seen in pretty much every single one of my videos in most cities. There's an eternal flame everywhere, and rightly so. Beginning to almost sort of repeat myself, there's so many eternal flames. I think the first one I was really taken aback by was uh, when I was in Minsk. That was a long time ago. That's when I first started this sort of YouTube journey of documenting my travels. Uh, it wasn't obviously the first time I was traveling, but it was certainly the first time I dared put a camera in my face. Lots of ums and lots of ahs. Let's see what we find in this park. We can see into the stadium over here. Look at this. Let's have a quick ganders into this stadium because this looks very kitsch with these seats. Maybe the uh, Turnip Hill football team, I'm not sure. Maybe that's their stadium. Turnopel. Turnopel. The turn The Turnopel football team. I keep butchering the name of this city and it's a bit sad really, isn't it? Which way should we go? Should we go this way or should we curve around? Uh, we'll go this way.
Well, this is a little bit sad. It's looking rather, rather dilapidated. Stone masonry fallen off. And we know from other Ukrainian monuments, they do normally keep them well, but this one has clearly been neglected. And it's a shame, really. Like it's, it's almost like someone's been skateboarding here and oh, all the stonework has come off. This once was a very proud monument overlooking this park, this very, very beautiful park, as the colouring of the leaves change in the autumn months now. I've got to watch my footing because these steps are almost Moldovan-like. Remember in Moldova how the steps were pretty much broken up the, every place. And I guess this is where the eternal flame once was, because usually the eternal flame is coming out of here. I guess the Russian gas ran out. And now we're here. This is a shame. Hopefully it gets restored to all its glory. I repeat myself, but the people that lost their lives during the First and Second World War should always be remembered. But let's go down here. Hopefully I'm not going to trip going down the stairs. But it, it is rather peaceful up here, I'll be honest. I'm going to take a moment. to be a monument to children so remembering probably children that lost their lives during the war I really really did like seeing the busts of the um, the soldiers over there all of them had died in 1944 and there were some graves as well which I thought best leave them be if only the park had a little bit more TLC I really hope the next time I return to this place uh, maybe for a little bit longer than 24 hours that the eternal monument has been made. If you're the mayor listening to this, that needs to be made better, not just for the people that lost their lives, but for the future generations so they can remember those people and we don't revert back into what happened. More people need to be aware of the history than forget it, especially the young children playing here. If this isn't left neglected, maybe they will grow up unaware. I don't know. I love seeing these old towers. It reminds me of an old boy that used to disassemble them in England. There was a whole TV show made about him, a documentary, where this old boy would, one by one, take the bricks off, dismantle these things, rather than having them blown up. Yeah, there's like uh, too many buildings, you know, to, to drop the thing like, or blow it up, as some people do. The chairman, of course, always won't let it be blown up, so I've got to knock it down a brick at once. But it's good to see that this is being put to use. Uh, probably not being in the healthiest of manners, there's mobile phone masks all over them. But I had to walk down this quiet, well not quiet street, this sort of very unimpressive street with traffic and slightly messed up pavement, just to sort of admire this chimney. I quite like it. There's a chap trying to get by now. And I'll let him get by. But onwards, I just wanted to take that in. I'm quite a fan of those things. You don't normally see this in a lot of places you go to. What, what's happened here is the uh, shop owner is obviously so sick of shoplifters that when they've been caught, they've had to hold their goods and a picture has been taken of them. Obviously the ones that got away are on here. Uh, it looks like he stole a beer. I think he stole some meat. I mean, poor guy. I mean, this guy is he's, he's in his 60s at least. He stole some beers. Not the biggest city in the world, not the biggest city in Ukraine. I'm sure most of these guys are, well, are known to the neighborhood and now the shop has shamed them for maybe their slight misdemeanor. 
doesn't happen in the US. In the US, they're having real problems right now because people are entitled to steal like under a thousand dollars worth of goods in places like California. And I think this is this rules even happen in New York now. So places are getting looted, and then the cops do nothing about it because they can't prosecute them. So people are just literally walking into the shop, taking things off the shelves, and walking out because the security guard doesn't want to get shot. It just happens. Complete lawlessness in the U.S. in certain states, at least. Normally, Democrat-run states, but you know that's what liberalism brings. Liberalism eventually brings the destruction of civilization. Now we're back on this main street. I'm slightly embarrassed because I didn't read that correctly. I didn't recognize the, uh, the good looking Alexander Pushkin. Um, you remember him from various uh, videos. Kropnietsky, I told his story about how he uh, effectively died in, of an early age in 1837 because he put too much into the obsession of a woman and died from a jewel. <sighs> Proud figure and I'm slightly embarrassed I didn't recognize him when we first walked down here. I, I put it down to the sun being in my eyes. We're getting closer and closer to 24 hours in uh, Tonopol. Tonopol, right, I think I've got it right now. Facing the National Theatre, or the Theatre of Tonopol, Monument to Independence. From my understanding, this was erected in 2012 to represent the independence of Ukraine. You see those symbolism all over Ukraine, and they are very proud of their independence here. Yeah. Let's go check out the theatre, shall we? Looks like the doors are open. This is the Taras Shevchenko Theatre. And I hear that it is equally as impressive inside as possibly the one in Odessa. But let's go check it out. Well, <laughs> something was going on in there. I wasn't. I was told to leave. Um, oh well, but it, very, very beautiful. Very, very beautiful. Uh, probably, probably because I needed a ticket. I imagine but something was happening. It almost looked political in there. Oh, I wonder if it was political. Okay, we're gonna try again, and we're gonna try and go inside this cathedral. I won't talk when inside, I'm just going to take my hat off, show my respect, uh, but at the same time, try to film. Okay. Um, We'll try again later. This time I think it's a service right at the front blocking the entrance, so I can't really squeeze past. It might be a christening, it might be a couple renewing their vows, I'm not sure. But I know I need to get in there before 3 o'clock, because at 3 o'clock there's another service that's being broadcast on YouTube. I noticed on their website this, all the services are broadcast, so 
very old cathedral built in the beginning of the uh, 19th century was restored after the Second World War because it suffered considerable damage. It is a very popular cathedral in this region and it would be a shame not to experience, at least have a look at the beautiful mosaics I'm hearing all about, but I'll do this after the service. I'll go get a coffee first. Well, I finally did get inside, but unfortunately I had to rudely gate crash the christening that was taking place. I hope they didn't mind, and I really hope that the political party that I also gate crashed earlier didn't mind me nosing around. The cathedral that we see here, the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, was built in 1749. It was originally a Greek Catholic uh, community cathedral. During the Second World War, the cathedral was badly damaged. But a few years later, the Soviets uh, took the initiative, which was strange, to actually restore the church. However, it didn't begin operating until the end of the Soviet Union after 1989, when the cathedral was turned from the Greek Catholic community of Ternopol and renamed into the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Inside this cathedral there are nine altars, and I have to admit, I really do like the Baroque style that we witness here. Truly impressive. I came back to the lake because I knew I'd missed uh, this castle. Uh, this is a castle that is on the map, so I figured let's go have a look. It seems to be like one of the last remaining significant monuments I haven't seen, or monuments, buildings, or whatever you want to call it. There's the big Ukrainian flag that we would have seen earlier from a distance. The clock is ticking, so I've got to be kind of quick. I'll get up there. So, it's not actually a castle, it's actually a church. But the original castle stood here. There's another service going on. And this was one of the original sort of ramparts to defend against the Mongols and the Tatars, which raided this region so frequently. But now it's just a church. I won't go in, because to be honest, the clock is ticking and there's, I can see there's a service going on. So I don't want to interrupt the photographer on the step. Who's that random foreigner interrupting our wedding? <laughs> and it is a wedding. You can see through the, through the gap there's a wedding going on. So uh, let's continue. Let's go check out this. Imagine, imagine walking into a British town or city and seeing the English flag or the Union Jack, St. George's Cross or the Union Jack, flying as high and as proudly as that. Now the biggest flag I've ever seen uh, was in Mexico City. I'm sure many of you have been there. There's a square right in the center. It's got this massive flag. That's a proud flag. It's amazing we have not done that in the UK. But it's not amazing because I understand why. Because the cultural Marxism that's going on in the UK is effectively trying to stop people being patriotic, stop people trying to identify with their country because the New World Order, this is a conspiracy theory by the way, but it, it is coming true, wants us to be nationless. They want no borders. They want a country that, that can be controlled by those, that, the technocrats that control everything, the corporations that control everything. If you identify with a the nation, their theory is, 
you're harder to control and you're harder to sort of move about. They want the free movement of labor when it's needed, but at the same time, you will stay in your place if they don't want you to move. And this is how it's all coming about. But that's for another video, and I don't really want to ruin this video by going off on one, talking about the, the vaccine passports, the digital ID, the, the great reset which is upon us. Because the light is about to turn green, let's cross. Usually I would give a little bit more insight into the city at an earlier stage in a video, but this time I've left it a little bit late as we're quickly coming to the end of the video. The population of Tenopolis is estimated to be around 225,000 to 230,000. Uh, the majority of the population is Ukrainian, hence the very homogenous population that we've witnessed in this video today. You know it's a big flag when it can block out the entire sun. That's a big, big flag. If you haven't already, there is an option to join the channel. If you join at tier two, uh, you get the privilege of me sending you a postcard every month from a random destination. And it really helps support this channel. Every subscriber, every like, every view, it all helps. Thank you. I have to say, this is one thing Ukraine is very good at. They have all these random little parks scattered around places and they utilize what they have. And I love the changing colors of the season it's very very beautiful and you can tell it's all pretty new around here new cobble streets so this park has had attention whereas the other park had little attention interesting features i have no idea how how this is relevant maybe it's an old fortress feature maybe it's not maybe it's just a sort of why not they tend to do that a lot in ukraine let's have something random and that's what they do As you can see, skate parks, places to work out. Why not? It's a really, really wholesome little place. Really wholesome. I'm just gonna hopefully not walk in anything here as I walk back onto the path. Amazing. Tennis courts over here. I was amused. The Burger King logo almost with Mick Burger. No confusion there, all sort of copyright. It's, it's good though, I like it. If you can get one up on Burger King or McDonald's, you're doing well, I think. Sadly, it may have been shut down by the uh, corporate giants. McBurger is surrounded in undergrowth. Didn't survive the COVID pandemic. Well, our journey is almost coming to an end, not quite at an end. Uh, just before I jump on a long train journey uh, to Venezia, still to come, I thought I'd jump into a very empty Georgian restaurant and have a Georgian beer, hair of the dog. Not bad, not as good as the beer I was drinking last night. A Georgian salad, and I'm gonna have some, some other main course, which we'll see in a moment. Anyway, bon appetit. Well, I have to admit, the uh, Georgian salad was very good. Walnuts paste covered the onions and the cucumbers, made from something very delicious. This is a blackberry chicken. I don't see any purple blackberries, or but let's see what this is like. This looks pretty good. Oh, there we go. It's going to be fried. So turn it over. There's a bit of chicken. I think they may have got my order wrong. There isn't a single blackberry in this chicken. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good though, it's like a chicken with creamy sauce or something. Not bad. Well there we go. Um, almost exactly 24 hours since we were last here. I think it was about 6 o'clock when we were last here yesterday on the 9th of October. Now it's the 10th of October. It gives you perspective on how long it takes me to edit these videos head into the station and that's it pretty much I really appreciate the fact you join me you click that like button that subscribe button we can see more adventures the next stop Venezia if I get there oh, look at this the old Soviet station loving the murals anyway we appreciate this I'll see you in the next one okay